the creativity and the possibilities you can perform with your hands, it can be much more wider than it is considered in boxing. The fundamentals will be still the same. Miyamoto Musashi who was one of the best swordsmen in history. He had like 61 duels, which mm. he won all, many which ended in death. He talks about the five attitudes of fighting. And he said that that's all. There's no other ways of striking. That's everything there is to it. We should give up all these kind of magical ways of thinking that maybe you can find some secret attack or secret mm. technique that somehow you can, you know, overpower your opponent just like this. When, you, when in reality, the reality is very simple. These hard and bone skills, because most people don't understand that like in boxing, you are not even allowed allowed to hit with your back fist, pit back fist, or even like the hammer fist. Like by the rules of the sport, you are only allowed to hit with the front knuckles. And because of this, like most techniques actually focus on just, you know, hitting with the front side because mm -hmm. you are not allowed to do, to do those other techniques. And the and because boxing has been the most effective and the most popular and the most prevalent combat sport. Uh, and so as a result, this whole thing has kind of like uh, transferred to ma mixed martial arts and other martial arts as well, that you mostly hit only with the front side of the hand. Yeah. But, but if you look at many traditional martial arts, they utilize every part of your hand. And that's why the conditioning and the hard and bone skill is so important because you actually harden the, the backside and the different knuckles. And you also can harden even your fingers and the, and the side of your hand. Mm -hmm. So when you do like hammer fists, it's actually a very hard piece of like skin when you connect to someone's head or something like this. Yeah, it's like a real hammer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but but because of this, the, the creativity and the possibilities you can perform with your hands, it's it it can be much more wider than it is considered mm. in boxing. But but still the fundamentals will be still the same. Even like when I re read the book from Miyamoto Musashi, who was one of the best swordsmen in history. He had like 61 duels, which mm. he won all, many which ended in death for the opponent. And he even used two like wooden swords just to humiliate his opponents. He was so good and so above everyone else that he wasn't even using regular swords. <laughs> like he was using wooden swords to make fun of the opponent. Yeah, this is not a legend. Like this is a, yes. this is a real. <laughs> like, yes, yes. Like, <laughs> but he also wrote the book, the book of five rings. Mm -hmm. And in the book, he talks about the five attitudes of fighting, and it's basically translates into like you can how you can hit and how you can strike. Like although it's sword fighting, the same principles apply one hundred percent almost to like every other form of combat, hand to hand combat, including. And in the book, he explained there's only five different ways of striking, which is like from from top, middle, uh, from the bottom, and then left and right. And he said that that's all. There's no other ways of striking. That's everything there is to it. And likewise, of Do course, you mean like head, like no, 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 center. from uh, from top top yeah, to bottom, top to bottom, then yeah. to middle, like straight punches, yeah, yeah. or like piercing like uh, strikes and then left is like from left to right yeah, like and smashing. right is from right to left and so on but he even explained back in the day like this is it this is all there is to it and likewise in the modern martial arts you have the same you have the hooks you have the uppercuts you have the straight punches then you have the overhand rights it's the same attitudes from bottom top middle left and right and the, and the point here is that we should give up all these kind of magical ways of thinking that maybe you can find some secret attack or secret mm. technique that somehow you can, you know, overpower your opponent just like this. When in, when in reality, the reality is very simple. There's like only 
certain ways you can strike like of course you can strike from left to right and then you can vary the distance whether it's like a long hook mm. or whether it's a short hook and then in addition to that you can change the angle of your strike whether it's like a whether whether you strike with the top two knuckles or whether you strike with the bottom three or whether mm -hmm. you strike with the backhand mm. but but still it's everything it's the same so, so what you're saying is yeah you have the main attitudes or nowadays we can call boxing techniques like hook body hook straight uppercuts like that's pretty much it yes and, the, the, the and everything else like different techniques are just mm. you know <laughs> a f a mixers of all of these <laughs> same attitudes yeah, with yeah, some, yeah. you know maybe different distance mm. whether it's close range mm -hmm. hook or long distance hook or whether it's different angle yeah if i think about it, it's only what changes is the the striking point and distance perhaps timing like yeah, yeah you can yeah, you, you find those yes. variables but and and that's <laughs> why hard and bone matters because if you harden this hand in different parts of the hand and even the forearm you have more possibilities or and more creativity when it comes to strikes because now suddenly you can strike very hard with your hammer fist mm -hmm. you can even strike with your forearm and back fist as well yeah and, and every single like regular strike also changes like that's what i was explaining why how people you know judge these traditional techniques and sometimes for a good reason maybe but but they don't see the that behind them back in the days or even now if you have conditioned arms they they work very different like they're not made for the for the regular use and even like this you know like someone mentioned okay we have the whole fist and but this forearm part and you can see even like the bus rutten you know i don't think he ever even hardened his forearms but he was able to like hit with this part with like massive force and he was like a very successful like a uh, fighter i'm not sure if he used this actually in the fights but he showed that in the but video he used lots of his uh, palms, palms yeah. strikes because back in the day they didn't back in the day <laughs> they have gloves like, they didn't use yeah. gloves or wraps either mm. so and they fought many times during the night mm. So after yeah. the first fight, you like hand <laughs> you was so sore. So everyone was doing such a you know, palm strike, <laughs> like a like a sumo wrestler. Yes, or something. <laughs> but if you had properly and very hard and fist, maybe you could fight five guys and hit them with your mm. knuckles and back fists. Good point. Like I, I'm wondering, like did none of them like train like hardening back then? Because I think they did, but not. Yeah so much and they didn't have the knowledge and they Maybe made some makiwara stuff but yeah i think they did some makiwara and some you know uh, like uh, push-ups on the mm. concrete and stuff yeah so i mean that's really I, I guess the thing that traditional martial arts offer a lot of benefits that are not always obvious because some of them are just like pretty much like gone even in the history and and regards to this like body weapon stuff but would you really need to understand it like in all of these martial arts, the techniques probably would like be very, very similar. Like you said, there's always the same. Like you, you just have, you, we all have the same human body. Mm -hmm. We have the same articulations. We can't really punch in some weird ways. Like we can't really change the anatomy. So that affects on, you know, the, the amount of punches we can do. But we can add a lot of variety to that with, for example, the hardening by distance, by doing different timing and taking like, some unorthodox principles from the traditional martial arts as well like i think that's a big benefit that you can get some element of surprise like we talk about this so many times like in nowadays you know you know the basic techniques that people will come at you you know that what they will pretty much punch yeah and at. actually like professional fighters know this that it's not even like it's not even so much about the actual techniques it's more about the setups <laughs> like setups mm -hmm. is how you actually land the shots mm -hmm. like the shots alone can be very hard to land when the opponent is very good because he can mm -hmm. read almost everything you do in yeah. advance so so the secret to actually landing shots and the secret to striking is many times the setups yep this is another thing you notice if you just like do sparring with even remotely like experienced guys or even some pro fighters uh here like you you cannot just like expect you have this perfect punch and you punch that, but it's not going to hit anything. Like it's uh, you need to have something like there. Like, and that's why I think it's 
it's so important to have this like pressure test stuff, which I think if just to go even back to the beginning of Wing Chun and everything like this, a lot of like these um, things we would have could have been able to like avoid all of these guys who go there and get beaten if they were even experienced in sparring at all. But like these people, they choose these opponents who have like a, who are completely like probably beginners and they're like, they kind of want to, to maybe, how do I say like, and they, they the, worship the master. Yeah, they worship so they the don't masters. Even, yeah. like, the master only need to do like this and they already like, yeah, it's just compliance. I think is maybe they the word. already jump in the air and <laughs> pass out. Yeah. Know? Like this is like, it's such a wake up call, you know, like uh, to, to do something. And it, it makes, I think the entire process of martial arts better. Like I already said, you know, it's, it's not the only measure of your martial arts to do, you know, win the competitions, you know, people always playing, hey, how is the streets then and so on. But it is like one of the best ways where you can test yourself. So like, and that if you have any delusions about your skills and something like go out there, do even, you don't even have to go to fight, just, you know, spar against some good guys and you will already like get a good understanding of like what is maybe missing in your game. If you have any like, uh, like this fantasy idea about anything. So that's like probably one of the most important things in just regards to, you know, any technique that you're using, whether it's Kung Fu or whether any abilities you think you may have or have not. So. Yeah.